Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're taking a closer look at the works of mercy. First the corporal works, then the spiritual. Today, the sixth corporal work of mercy, ransoming the captive. Once again, as with harboring the harborless, we can't take this work of mercy literally. After all, most of the people who need ransoming these days are hostages or prisoners of war, and most of us have very little chance to help someone like that. Likewise, the intention is clearly not for every criminal to be released from prison without paying for their crimes. That would violate the perfect justice of God. So, how are we supposed to ransom the captive if not through those means? Well, the truth is that a person can be held captive in many different ways. Anything that keeps a person trapped in one place or in one spot in their life can hold a person captive. The big ones, however, are sins, lies, and poverty. When a person is living a sinful life, it can ruin their chances for happiness, making a mess out of their life and destroying their relationships with those who care about them and want them to be happy. If a person is lying to those around them or to themselves, it can affect how they see the world, and being trapped in a deception can be just as bad. Those things alone can ruin a person's ability to recognize their own importance and the importance of virtue, the existence of God, and from there, anything else of importance. Of these various things that can trap a person, poverty is the one most directly related to physical well-being. But poverty is not merely a physical condition. Some people are poor even when they have money because they lack self-control. Having an incorrect philosophy and trying to get everything you want right away can lead a person into poverty even if they wouldn't have been in it otherwise. So the answer isn't always just to give them stuff. In every case, when a person is held captive by these things, they need more than just material possessions. They need the company of a good, reliable friend, who, in a pinch, can help lead them down the right path, away from wastefulness, sin, and ruin, and towards a fulfilling, happy life. If we can do this for even one person, that's quite an accomplishment, and definitely a work of mercy. Next, why should we bury the dead? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.